Howdy nerds, this is a lava bucket farm I started designing yesterday and today I have refined it pretty much it shouldn't uh, break at all and you can expand it as far as you like without making any changes to the redstone which is super convenient especially if it, this design looks a bit hard to understand at first sight if that's the case for you so it is quite simple to expand as well i'll show you how later so first to come over here face towards the hopper and start collecting lava from the cauldron and then the machine is going to do several logic checks and see if there is lava in the cauldron if it is going to find like this one then it's going to pull out and do a ding sound so you know that there is lava ready you can pull it out you can leave the machine when the cauldron is up and it will generate lava over time thanks to this dripstone mechanic and then later you can come and harvest all of the uh, lava buckets uh, now talking about the feed tape this is a bit and this is the fastest feed tape you can get over here if you're going to make this feed tape longer then it will take longer for cauldron to make entire circle towards that starter piston over there these green concretes are the buds block update detector they detect if the cauldron is over here this first start over here with this red concrete circuit we start with this compiler this compiler detects if there is lava in the cauldron if it detects this lava in the cauldron then it's going to output a redstone signal with strength of 3 and that redstone signal is going to run into this T flip flop over here this T flip flop gets triggered as you can see over here the compiler is on then that compiler powers this repeater and this repeater goes further further over here and powers this little mechanism with the sign concrete this pulls out the lava bucket and you have lava bucket on the top kind of simple design it also works in the other way it also pushes back over here we collect lava and we go over here towards this top compiler this top compiler detects if the lava has been taken out from the cauldron and if it detects then it will depower this uh, falling edge monostable circuit and get a signal over here if you don't know what they do they basically if you take out the signal they give out a signal and that signal will run out into this T flip flop turning it off once it's off it will go towards this white concrete circuit and it will start the feed tip and this feed tip will keep running until it will find another cauldron and this white one this white concrete feed tip uh, this circuit helps in stopping it now as the machine can detect that lava is here lava has been taken out start pushing stop pushing you don't have to do much uh, changes to the design of the feed tape to make it even longer as far as you like but issue with that like i mentioned in the start is that the cauldron will take a lot longer to make the entire circle and go towards that starter piston over there in the right side in the white concrete as you can see how it's shrinking actually i don't know why the pistons are not making noise maybe they are getting too many updates but when i was not recording it was making noise i started recording it's not making noise <laughs> kind of funny how that works uh, we'll crack on with how to make it soon if you couldn't figure out and how to expand it this i think is uh kind of unnecessary kind of redstone because you can get nether or you can get lava from the nether but issue with that is at max you can get is 27 buckets with your own inventory if you don't use the shulkers uh, but in here you can collect as much as you like <laughs> i mean there are like four double chests over here 
so yeah and you're also not in harm in getting explodificated by ghost kind of simple design let's crack on how to build it now before we really start these are all the items used to build this machine so you can pause the screen and collect the items or collect them later how you like it now before we really really start you need to know that all the concrete blocks I'm using they are mostly to show different parts of the machine like different circuits or different part like here we are starting with the feed tape piston feed tape and we are using glass it means to use transparent block but here the tinted glass means we are using a like, tinted glass means this is a wall and that one means it's a floor <laughs> we are going to add different circuits step by step as you can see all those almost ready machines now let's start with this here we have a 13 by 13 square and we are placing 11 cauldrons on each side except for the corners like gap over here gap over here here and over there that's all 11 cauldrons there are 44 over here at the moment then we're going to add dripstone and lava on top of it you don't need to make it out of glass this is just aesthetic to show that there's lava over here <laughs> this will fill up by the time you would be making machine then we're going to add buds to the side and we don't need cauldron over there did a mistake let's get rid of that boom there's the bud in action and take out the cauldron uh, yeah there we go yeah so we are going to build this kind of buds in the corners we have observer facing towards the cauldrons and then we have piston pushing it and we have a repeater running into the piston and another repeater running into this repeater with two tick delay this will block the second pulse of the observer so we don't get any kind of constant updating cycle with observers we're going to place like this kind of mechanism on all four sides and here we have a white one this will this is a bit different we have sticky piston on the bottom over there and we need a cauldron over here so now we have 45 cauldrons over here it is important to know that where we have observers we don't have a dripstone no lava over here the issue here is we don't have them because the uh, observer can detect uh, that the cauldron is being filled by the lava and we don't want unnecessary detection that's why we don't not going to put any dripstone above any of those observers now that's done we are going to add this cauldron pulling circuit it is kind of simple we have sticky piston like that sticky piston over there and we have hopper and chests let's take a look at the circuit once again here we have a sticky piston looking on top then we have sticky piston towards the cauldron then we have a redstone torch over here and redstone torch over here we have a redstone dust and the repeater running into this redstone torch deactivating that sticky piston <laughs> then let's add with the let's add the other half let's add the first half of the logic here we have a solid block over here near the cauldrons then we have compiler over here running into a solid block this will power this will give a redstone signal which will run into this t flip flop this t flip flop looks like this dropper facing over here then dropper faces down hopper faces towards there and we have a dropper facing up this is the entire circuit of the flip flop then we have compiler over here running into a solid block and the solid block is powering this repeater which powers this repeater over here which deactivates this redstone torch that's the entire circuit that's the first half of the logic then we're going to go up over here we're going to add the other half of the logic 
here we collect going to go at the, at the other side over here we're going to add another opaque block with comparator taking signal from the cauldron powering this solid block which runs into this repeater which runs into this photic delay repeater with redstone dust like this with sticky piston with opaque block on top this will give out a signal when the uh, power will go off we have a transparent block over there that is necessary then we go down like this and we power the D flip flop again turning it off that's the entire circuit that's the entire logic then we are going to add the ding ding machine <laughs> ding 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 and this is powered by the cake there is the cake over here we can take signal from cake with comparator if you put a solid block in between them then we have node blocks ding 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 with solid uh, with gold blocks below them so they will make that ding ding noise now the ding ding machine is done <laughs> we're going to finish the build here we have this white concrete it this is the piston feed tape starting mechanism we have the redstone dust feeding of that repeater running into this comparator delay circuit then we have a repeater with delay of two ticks which runs into this uh, glass tower which goes over here and powers this sticky piston this is a sticky piston with the observer on top of it place the sticky piston like this and then you place the observer that's entire thing done ha psych that was not the entire thing then you also need to add this concrete uh, circuit this helps in stopping the entire feed tape otherwise the feed tape will keep running i mean it will stop but it will stop a bit too slow now you can test and the machine seems to be working this is how the entire thingy works you can of course add whatever storage system you want over here this is just simple i have made over here with hopper and chests and now let's take a look at how to expand the piston feed tape so you can get more calls on with the same redstone as you can notice I mean, maybe you can't but the same I have just left out the redstone which is in the same machine like the entire redstone circuit is here same as on that one over there it's just I have taken out quite a big part of the piston feed tape now I'm going to show you how to expand the piston feed tape so you can collect more lava buckets from the same design. Now before we start, you need to know that the purple concrete shows where you need to place the cauldrons, while the cyan concrete shows that that place is going to be empty. And I'm also going to use a simple bud design because if you'll be making the machine uh, then you probably don't want to spend hours grinding for redstone dust to just make repeaters they're quite expensive first you're going to start like this you're going to place piston like that over here and we need to place an observer near the piston now we're going to make an l shape i'm going to make it with green concrete to show that this is the redstone of the machine of this bud design and we're going to place redstone dust here. That's the entire design. Now when observer is going to detect that the cauldron has moved, it's going to push the next cauldron. I will simplify it. As you can see, there we used two redstone repeaters and here we are using none, which is much simpler. I'm going to show you. Like, assume that the cauldron just moved there, then the piston is going to push the other one, which is already in its place. It's working nice. Uh, now I'm going to continue making it further. They, you need to remember that where we have observers, the cauldron that cannot have dripstone on top of it. Reason is the observers can detect that the cauldron is getting filled, and we don't want unnecessary detection. This can break the machine in some highly unlikely case. Now I'm going to place another. Uh, piston like this 
Now I'm going to detect it with an observer. Going to place. Okay, let's continue this first. Going to place observer near the piston like this. Then we are going to make an L shape, reverse L this time over here, and you're going to place a redstone dust. That's the entire batch design complete, and so on and so forth. We are going to keep doing this. Here we are going to meet at very close, uh, not much space area. So I'm going to make a slightly different design. I'm going to show you. First, I need to piston over there. Let's remove that one, and we need to place observer. Maybe I, I can fit here. No. Let's try counting first. I'm going to place here. Need redstone dust on top of it. Then we're going to drop down by one, one, and then we need to place observer. I think observer can power from here. Maybe, maybe from here. Then we're going to place observer like this, and we need to do redstone dust below it. So now redstone can ah. Okay, ah, I did slight mistake. We need to make staircase a bit longer. Going to place that, place that. Redstone dust here, here. Going to remove uh, the observer by one block for the right here here and observer like that and that's the entire body design completed now when the cauldron will move in front of the observer observer is going to detect it and the pit, and then the next cauldron which is going to appear on that cyan concrete it's going to get pushed let's do a test to place here here not over there oh, never mind. <laughs> it worked here, 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 on top of the observer, here, here. Now let's do, let's expand it a bit more, like that. Now let's do a minor test. You're going to place a cauldron over there as if it has moved. And that should, uh, it should have pushed out, but it didn't push out. Let's do it again. Ah, I forgot to add a bud over there. Okay, I'm a monkey. You also need piston over here. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to change direction by itself. Of course, I knew that. I was just testing you. <laughs> going to add piston like that. I'm going to add observer to its right. Then we are going to make another reverse L. Like this, going to place during that concrete, going to place redstone dust, and now that should work. We can remove concrete from here, and we can remove concrete from here. Boom. Now, let's do the test again. We can simulate as if the cauldron has just moved over there and it came back. It's quite fast actually, I thought it's going to be a bit slower. It's not that slow as expected. It is slightly slower, but it's not that slow. Now we're going to show you that the dripstone is never going to be where the observer is detecting. So no dripstone here, as you can see, as there's no dripstone here. Then we don't have we have space over here. Don't have any cauldron over here. Need to know that. This is repeating the point which I mentioned earlier. Now I'm going to speed it up a bit. Now you know. And I'll connect it to this part. I'll speed up the footage a bit. Uh, we should now we are going to do a minor test. I think the entire thing is done before I start placing lava. Just going to do my test if the cauldron returns and see if the speed is that different. And, and that took a while, that took a while. It's working. I was bit why it's not going to work. 
Yeah, it is working. It's not that slow actually, even though I have added like extra five observers. Now I'm going to add lava on top of it. Remember that on where we have lava, uh, correction, where we have observer, we don't have a dripstone on top of the cauldron. Now super fast build mode once again. <laughs> Now, all the lava has been placed, we can do another minor test, it shouldn't make any difference because we only placed lava and dripstone, we need to do that, and then it should do a cycle, there it does, and there's another cauldron with lava, works quite fast, let's check if we can see how fast it goes, you can see where the cauldron is being placed, so it's still slow. Yeah, there is room for improvement. Maybe we can someone can make it even faster later. Well, <coughs> that's the entire build. Thanks for watching. Come again next time. Bye.